بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم لتنذر قوما ما أنذر آباؤهم فهم غافلون لقد حق القول على أكثرهم فهم لا يؤمنون Translated as لتنذر is from the word to warn um, أنذر ينذر to warn um, to warn a people um, whose forefathers, the Aba, have been warned before. But they were of the, in a state of ghafla. They were negligent of the warning that came to their forefathers. Um, and the matter has already been settled for them. They won't believe. So Allah Ta'ala is telling um, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam here, outlining that these people are not going to believe. But still you need to warn them and remind them. The purpose of Wahiya, of revealing the Qur'an and the Risala, is to warn a nation whose forefathers were warned and they were negligent and they did not take heed of this message. So what happened here? in Arabia at this point in time is that no messenger had come to them for a very long time and they approximate this to be 600 years the last being Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam these people were then living between a state between two prophets okay, before the advent of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and after Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam what happened was they distorted the message of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam and they changed it for their own benefits to say that um, he was the son of the creator and he is God and, and they developed this trinity idea. So they, and, and, and they deceived people with this. But so these people at this point in time before the Prophet came to them, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they had no clear message. And we are taught in our Akida, in the Ash'ari school and the Maturidi school, the main schools of theology, of Tawheed, of Akida, that Allah Ta'ala does not hold a people to account unless a messenger was sent to them. So before the Prophet came to them, these people were in a state of fitrah. They are not held to account because a clear message is not there, the message was distorted. They are in a primordial state and are not held to account regardless of what they do. Because our rules in Akida, the Mu'tamad, the most relied upon uh, opinions in our school, which is agreed upon by all these schools, is that you cannot be held to account for divine uh, indication and divine commandments unless that message has come to you. And Regarding us, we will be held to account because no message will come after this and the Qur'an is guaranteed never to be distorted. So it was therefore a necessary duty for the Prophet ﷺ to warn and guide them. Now, there are six duties and priorities of um, those who are referred to as the Arifin, those who are aware and receptive to, to the spiritual realities of the life to come, and those of Ghafla, the Ghafilun, those who are negligent. And this is mentioned by a Sayyid Imam Abdullah bin Alawi al-Haddad, rahimahullah ta'ala, um, in his treatise on knowledge and wisdom. Just listen quickly to what he has to say. Since we have mentioned the Ghafilin here, let's clarify this. He says the Arifin have six qualities and the Ghafilin have six qualities. They are the same but they are upside down. The Arifin, the first priority is Tashihul Iman wal Yaqeen, is to rectify their faith and their certainty. And they, how do they do this? They do this by uh, making firm the ikhlas, the sincerity, the genuineness in the Tawheed and their belief. And they move shawaib shirk al khafi. They remove hidden shirk. You know uh, that you pray, but you want people to see you. you. Give charity, hoping for name. You do good deeds and give sermons, hoping you gain a place in people's hearts. So they rectify this. They remove this, so that they can rectify their faith. That's the first priority. The second priority tashihul akhlaq al mahmuda. They rectify the inner qualities. Like Zuhud, detaching their hearts from the material. They, 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 
they take what they need but they don't go in excess and they share a lot and they try to put goodness in the hearts of people and they remove the akhlaq al madhmuma like greed, anger, hatred, ostentation, arrogance. That's the second priority. Third priority is tasheeh al-a'mal as-saliha al-zahira. Then they move to the outward bodies to check if their sujood is right and their ruku is correct and, and, and their bodies are correct. And they are, cautioned, they, they, call, they are cautious with outward sin. And if they fall into a sin, they make tawbah. Fourthly, they rectify the umur al-ma'ash wa nadra fiha. They rectify the domestic affairs. وَحُسْنُ التَّدْبِيرِ لَهَا عَلَىٰ طَرِيكِ الْوَرَعُ وَالنُّصْحِ They take counsel and advice from experts as they traverse this world with a domestic affairs. وَالْأَخْذُ بِالْقَنَاءَ وَتَقَلُّلُ مِنْهَا And they are content with what they have, even if it be a little. And they are rejoicing in their spiritual state. That's the six priorities of the Arifin. The Ghafilin, the first priority is that they are, they are not content with the worldly, with the, they need more all the time. And secondly, they make sure that their the domestic affairs um, are, are in order first. There must be a nice car, the house must be packed, there must be enough food, there must be uh, shelter, uh, clothes, uh, you name it, amwal, there must be enough wealth. Once this is there and they are content with this, then they find a space to rectify their outward selves, their salah, their zakah, outwardly. And if Allah opens a window for them, then only can they see that they need to rectify the akhlaq al-batina, the character, the hearts, removing filth and adorning with beauty, rahma, shafaqah, compassion, removing greed and ostentation. And later on, if they, if they find a window, they rectify the iman, by removing this hidden shirk which we mentioned. This is the exact opposite of the Arifin. Think about this. Imam Haddad has listed it in his book of knowledge and wisdom. And we're mentioning this because in this surah we came across a, a group known as the Ghafilun. And this is how Imam Haddad defines them. وَصَلِّ وَسَلِّمْ عَلَىٰ سَيِّدِنَا مُحَمَّدْ وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ وَصَحْبِهِ وَبَارِكُ وَسَلِّمْ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ السَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّ